Make way for Drew Brees, newest addition to the team of investors at Sports Illustrated Tickets. This is a fan-first ticketing marketplace, over 50 million tickets, sports concerts, theater events everywhere. And you can go to SITickets.com, zero fees. Fans pay only the price they see listed on the site. No hidden fees, no surprises at checkout. Drew Brees, the future Hall of Famer, joining us. You know, I want to go back to your rookie season. And you were drafted, you go to the uh, Chargers, and you sit. Were you ready to play your rookie season in the NFL? Uh, I, I got I got in uh, one time during my rookie year. Actually, Doug Flutie got a concussion in the second quarter against the Kansas City Chiefs, and I came in and played about two and a half quarters. And, man, I, had some, I probably had some disastrous moments during that. Um, but I also had some good moments just because I didn't know any better. And I was just kind of freewheeling and dealing. Bottom line is this. I think the best thing that all these rookie quarterbacks can do is sit for a period of time. And I don't know if that's a full season, uh, part of a season. But um, I, I do have a formula in, in, in my mind for, I think, when a QB ends up being ready to play at the next level. And, and every, every guy's going to be a little bit different. But I think it has uh, – to do with the combination of the experience that they have leaving college, you know, the type of system that they've been in in college and then how much time they sit in the NFL. But yes, I think it's very beneficial for a guy to sit for a period of time behind uh, a veteran quarterback. But part of the problem is you have these, these franchises that are starved for victories, winning a tradition like the bears, you know, the commanders, they draft quarterbacks, Patriots draft a quarterback, like, the fans want to see them play. The, the owner wants to appease the fans. I mean, it's kind of this tug of war of what's good for the player, what's good for my fan base here. Yeah, well, I, I'll, I'll give the Bears as an example. You know, um, you know Justin Fields obviously had has um, an incredible skill set. Um, and I'm excited to see how Pittsburgh uses him this year. I would actually envision – uh, a situation where it, it's almost like a Taysom Hill type package, you know, like we had in New Orleans where, um, you know, Russell Wilson is your starting quarterback. Justin Fields is getting seven to 10 snaps a game. You know, how problematic would that be for a defense, right? Um, he, he, he can come in and do many things explosively in the run game and the pass game. You know, why, why wouldn't they have started him off that way as a rookie? Um, hey, you, you, you're not going to be the starter, but we're going to have a package of stuff for you that just brings you along that kind of gets your feet wet and gets you into this without kind of feeling like you're just throwing the whole thing on his shoulders. Um, I just think if you look statistically at the guys who have succeeded when they came in day one as the starter, um, it's not very many, um, especially if they were in a situation where the job was given to them versus they really had to go out and, and, and earn it. I think there's something psychological to that. How important is uh, the schedule release to players? How much did you take note of it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I was up to the second, you know, I, the minute that that would come out, you immediately start visualizing where you have to go, the time of year, the teams you have to be, you know, if you've got a couple of these, you know, back to back games, if you have a Monday night, hey, short week, and then we got to go here and play this, who do we have on Thursday night, like you immediately begin to kind of formulate your strategy for the season based based on that schedule. Well, you are, you're looking at your bye week. Uh, how do you end the season? You're playing a conference opponent. You know, you're going overseas. You know, you're, you're, you're all those. Yeah. It, it's like you're trying to plan five months. <laughs> well, yeah. And then, and then, and then you start getting the text messages from family like, hey, we're coming down to this game, right? <laughs> you got to, you got to manage all that stuff too. Was there a team when you go, yes, I can't, like, we're playing this team? Like, do you look forward yeah. to playing that team? Who was that? Well, I think, I, I think immediately you're looking for primetime games, right? Like, you're looking for Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night, right? Like, when America's going to be watching, you're the only game on television, there's a reason that you guys are going primetime against this opponent, right? Um, so there's those. Um, you know, you, you certainly look at the divisional opponents. But I feel like that's become a bit more formulaic. Like it's, you, you play them in the beginning and then you play them at the end, right? And then everything in between is just, you know, whoever, whenever. Um, you know, you start looking at games where you could get some potential weather. Um, like, for example, I'm looking at the Saints this year and it's at Green Bay, December 23rd, right? So immediately in my mind, I'm thinking, all right, here we go, 20 degrees, it's going to be snowing, right? You just, you start visualizing what that moment's going to be. So 
all, all those all those factors and variables. What kind of welcome reception do you think Sean Payton gets when the Broncos come to New Orleans? Oh, uh, he's he's going to get a huge welcome reception um, until the game starts. <laughs> 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 and, 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 until he starts yelling at the refs uh, on the sideline when the game starts. Um, no, it, it's uh, New Orleans loves Sean Payton, and, and as they should. Ever play a game overseas? Yeah. Yeah, we played two London games, um, 08 against the Chargers and 17 against the Dolphins. Do you see the city at all? Yeah. You know what? Those were great trips. We, it's funny. When people ask me, hey, how would you like the London trip? First off, we went over there for a week. Um, I, I think some teams now, maybe Jacksonville, just because of their proximity to London, you know, they've played a couple games there a year now. It seems like they just go over for three days and come back. But, you know, we made it a week-long trip. Um, it's one of those where if you go over there and you win, it was an awesome trip. If you ever go over there and lose, you're probably like, ah, oh, that, that wasn't very fun. Um, but we won both games. It, we, we, we made the most of it. You know, there's some jet lag Monday, Tuesday, and then you just kind of get into a routine. Uh, you have some free time. You have a chance to go see, see the city a little bit with your teammates, maybe Monday, Tuesday, to have family come in. Or my wife and I, you know, would walk around on Friday kind of after practice just to um, just kind of clear my head, get ready for the game, spend some time with her, and then, you know, you get ready to roll on Sunday, and it kind of feels like an ordinary week. Except you walk into a stadium with fans that have every possible jersey um, <laughs> for every possible sport. <laughs> and and just cheer at random moments. Yeah, that's uh, – that was pretty much the, the atmosphere. It feels like the NFL has shied away from putting a franchise in London. Now it feels like let's just kind of travel the globe – and then we'll just have certain cities that, you know, teams can have a fan base there in Brazil or in Germany, uh, Jacksonville and London. So I, do you see a team in another country full-time at any point? Yeah, that's a good question. I know they've been talking about it for a while. I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think logistically that would be, it'd be difficult. But, uh, but obviously playing the sport in London, we've had these Munich games, Mexico City, going to Brazil this year. Right. So I, I think the, you know, being able to spread, spread the knowledge and, and the love of the game, you know, throughout the globe, uh, I think is, is probably more of a realistic probability is that you continue to schedule games in some unique places, maybe develop even, you know, broader fan bases. Um, you know, the, I think the digital media uh, part of this equation is, is where uh, it can get really, really profitable as well and continue to drive league revenues. So to me, that's the more realistic approach. Tell me what you're doing with uh, Sports Illustrated tickets. Yeah, so Sports Illustrated tickets. Um, obviously, we all know the Sports Illustrated brand. It's one of the most iconic brands in all of sports. I think when I think to when I was a kid and when most of us were growing up, you know, that would have been our ultimate goal was to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated. I had the great fortune of being able to do that a few times. Um, now, Sports Illustrated is getting into the ticket business uh there's a sports illustrated ticket platform um that actually has an nfl partnership you know right alongside ticket master seat geek um but um at the end of the day uh we feel like we will do it better and can do it better it's a transparent process there's nothing worse than as a fan when you go onto a ticketing website and you see a price and then by the time you get to the end there's this fee and there's that fee and now it's twice what you thought it was going to be. That's not the case with Sports Illustrated Tickets. It's a very transparent process. We have an NFL partnership. We've got two and a half billion dollars, a billion uh, tickets inventory when it comes to sports, uh, concerts, theater, uh, the best venues in, 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 in the entire country. Um, so we wanted to provide that platform for fans, that experience, and it's just another vertical that Sports Illustrated is in that just continues to uh, build the iconic brand. It's SITickets.com with uh, zero fees. Yeah, you have that iconic cover with you after winning the Super Bowl with your son wearing his headphones. How old is he now? He's 15. <laughs> that it's, it, it's, it's incredible. Um, uh, you know, hard to believe. Because, um, yeah, I've got that Sports Illustrated cover in my office, you know, holding him up. And he'll walk in and, and I'll just I'll, I'll have that moment of reflection every now and then and just say, son, can you, can you believe you know, here we are, and, you know, I'm about to coach you in high school sports, you know, um, playing football lacrosse um, and just becoming becoming a young man. Um, so it's 
one of my greatest joys in life as a father is to watch watch my son play, watch him grow up, be a part of his life. Um, but really, all of our kids, it's kind of a crazy time for us. We're, we're, we're in the thick of it. Um, have seven-on-seven seven playoffs on Friday uh, this week and some lacrosse playoffs, some baseball playoffs, and it's it's the greatest. Before I let you go, any advice for Tom Brady when he gets in the booth? Yeah, you know what? It um, I think he did it right by taking a year off. Um, you know, sometimes I, I, I wish I wish I would have done that. Um, yeah, I jumped right into into the booth. Um, I'll tell you what, it's uh, I love broadcasting games. You know, it was the preparation was very much like playing the game, um, and I think he and I are wired in a lot of the same ways. You know, I, I don't think that's ever going to leave us. Um, you know, you just kind of watch the game different, you see the game different, and then you can communicate the game different. Um, so, I, look, I think he's going to do a great job. Um, I think he spent a lot of time studying some of the greats um, in the in the business. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll see. But obviously he has a wealth of knowledge and experience to share. Great to catch up with you again. Good luck with the kids, and thanks for joining us. You too, DP. Thanks, man. That's Drew Brees, future Hall of Famer.